Good morning one and all. Welcome back to the session 4 of module 2. In this part of the session, you will go for studying the hydraulic formulas utilized for the designing of the sievers running with respect to either the partially full condition or half full conditions or maybe any of the ratios which is given to you. Therefore, in the partial full conditions, what is the hydraulic design? Normally, the basic principle you know that for any discharge conditions, we know the formula that is hydraulic formula Q is equal to A into V. For a circular section, you know that area is equal to pi by 4 into D square, isn't it? So therefore, I can also represent it in terms of a capital D here. So because when you are going to see the circular section of the sievers, Okay, therefore, the diameter is what we are going to consider in the form of the depth. Okay, the flow is being considered in terms of in depth. That particular section we call it as a full section. Next, if we go for considering during the low flow condition, maybe quarter full condition, running condition or half full which we call it as a semicircular in nature this particular section we call it as completely as a semicircular in condition. So, this particular part we call it as a partially full condition. So, because I need to know what is the distance here because it is like a chord and this is a radius. So, therefore, here if you are going to take it it is the d by 2. Okay. So, the depth which you are going to consider it is always the half of this is always considered with respect to the d by 2. So, therefore, small d that is the depth of the partially full section is equal to the diameter divided by 2 because it is the same thing that we are going to consider it or nothing but we call it as an r. Therefore, when in this sort of an consideration, now you need to apply the formulas. How do you go for applying the formulas? Here, there will be some angle between made during the flow conditions. So, what is the angle within perpetuated has to be taken into consideration. Understanding it clearly, okay. So, with respect to this, now my first thing is I need to find out what is the proportionate depth, what is the hydraulic depth or what we call it as R is equal to A by P. Okay, that formula also we know that. So, R is equal to A divided by P. We also know that Manning's equation V is equal to 1 by N, R to the power of 2 by 3 and S to the power of 1 by 2. So, these are the formulas which we have come across even in the case of the applied hydraulics as well as in the previous part of the problems. Now, again we need to apply during the half full conditions. So, therefore, in half full conditions, let us get to know what is the depth of the flow. Okay. So, in order to determine the depth of the flow, we have that the depth partially full section to that of the full section because I do not know what is the particular distances that has been met across. So, that I need to consider it. Therefore, if the theta is being driven out here, I wanted to determine what is the depth of this particular portion in this condition, whatever may be this. So, here this will be the cosine and this particular angle will be the sine in nature. Getting clear with this? So, this is completely it is the d by 2, okay, d by 2. Now, I wanted to know what is the depth of the partial flow. So, depth of the partial flow I need to know, let us get to determine it. So, depth of partial flow. Depth of the partial flow is being given as d is equal to, small d is equal to, what I know this is d by 2, d by 2 minus d by 2 into what how much this is that is cos alpha or what we call it sorry the theta the angle which has been made here with respect to this it is theta by 2 therefore that is equal to d by 2 into cos theta by 2 understand it clearly okay 
getting the point clear for this so therefore the next important thing it is d is a common factor here when the d is a common factor or d by 2 is also a common factor take out that so therefore d by 2 into 1 minus of cos theta by 2 this is equal to d getting the point clear for this now next thing i would want to know what is the angle for that in order to determine the angle i need to know what is the proportionate depth also okay so for this particular instances you need to check up what is the proportionate depth so therefore d is there and capital d take out this side so therefore i will continue here itself only so therefore d by you transfer it here to the denominator d by d is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 minus cos theta by 2 getting it clearly now let d by d is equal to x if d by d is equal to x here therefore i will take it as x is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 minus cos theta by 2 multiply it here bring it down so 2x is equal to 1 minus cos theta by 2 next i wanted to know what is the value of cos theta by 2 is equal to 1 minus 2x which implies that theta by 2 is equal to cos inverse of 1 minus 2x and therefore theta is equal to 2 into cos inverse of 1 minus 2x so this is the formula in order to determine the angle which has been formed during the flow conditions getting it clear this is how you need to utilize or in other sense you can theta is equal to 2 into cos inverse of 1 minus 2 into d by d okay this is what we call it as a proportionate depth content okay this particular thing we call it as proportionate depth please do remember this has to be done during the calculations or solving of the numerical problems getting clear with this now the next thing it is when i found out what is the angle for partially running conditions and d by d is equal to this much the next important thing that you need to come across is mainly related to finding out what is the area so therefore how i need to find out the area here normally we come across for estimating the formula what is that let us get to know so totally hydraulic formulas we have so therefore d by d is equal to depth by proportionate depth we have the formula that is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 minus of cos theta by 2 next what about the area so therefore we have a by a so a by a area so therefore we have theta by 360 minus minus theta divided by 2 pi next we have the next set of the things that we have is nothing but related to the r by r so therefore r by capital r is equal to we have the utmost formula that is which we have derived so the d by 4 and d by 4 gets cancelled in this conditions what you have earlier it is equal to 1 minus 360 sin theta divided by 2 pi theta so divided by d by 4 so it will get cancelled only thing that has been remaining here next we have the velocity calculation so v is equal to what we have 1 by an r to the power of 2 by 3 s to the power of so all these things and all totally if i going to take it n is remaining in terms of a constant so therefore yes also it is like a constant only r by r to the power of 2 by 3 is been indicating here 
okay so therefore this proportionality is been taken so v is directly proportional to that of r to the power of 2 by 3 so therefore it is totally been given as v by capital v small v by capital v that is equal to whatever that conditions that you have taken that is equal to 1 by 360 sin theta divided by 2 pi theta whole raised to the power of 2 by 3 okay so this is the one condition next set it is so therefore q by q you need to take it q is nothing but a by a into v by v so a by a into v by v okay so therefore what is a by a is equal to so therefore theta minus divided by 360 minus sin theta divided by 2 pi into what is the velocity is being given as the ratio that you have to take it okay so it is being given as 1 minus 360 sin theta divided by 2 pi theta whole rise to the power of 2 by 3 so this particular set of an equation is required for proportionate discharge proportionate discharge proportionate discharge okay so this set of a condition is at most required and the p by p is also being given so therefore these are the set of the hydraulic formulas which are being required okay please do keep it in the mind maybe i think now it is the time and let us meet in the next part of the class for solving this set of the conditions of the problems based upon the data when it is being not given what is the case if you need to determine what is the discharge when the depth is not being given what is that particular part of a case let us get to know one by one still then stay tuned thank you one and all good morning to one and all in uh, today's part of the class let us get to know the hydraulic problems related to the sieves okay the hydraulic formulas are being utilized previously what we have come across okay determining the ratio of depth of the half running full to that of the completely full and in the case of the sievers proportionate depth proportionate area proportionate r that we call it as a wetted perimeter proportionate velocity as well as the proportionate discharge these were the different set of the hydraulic formulas that were utilized now we shall solve two problems related to the hydraulic formulas which have been applicable for it and further we shall move on towards the different types of the systems okay so now i'll be going to dictate the problem please do take it on it will be mentioned in the screen itself only now let us get to know the concepts okay mainly So with respect to the hydraulic design of the sievers, I will be going to dictate the problem that is determine the size of the circular pipe, determine the size of the circular pipe that is this we call it as a circular siever for a discharge of 600 liter per second running half full assume I is equal to 0 0.0001 and N is equal to 0 0.015. Once again let me repeat it. Determine the size of circular siever for a discharge of 600 liter per second running half full assume I is equal to 0 0.001 and N is equal to 0 0.105. Now with this let us go for the consideration what it has been happening. Let us get to know the concepts one by one. Now. For the problem 1 here, what is the given data? Given data that is Q is equal to 600 liter per second. So 600 liter per second is nothing but 600 divided by 1000 gives you 0 0.6 meter cube per second. 0.6 meter cube per second. Now, Next, I am given what is that I is equal to 0 0.0001 which is nothing but that is equal to the slope. 
or a gradient. Next set of the data which is being given that is n is equal to 0 0.015. Okay. So, what is the major thing that we need to determine? The condition is being given as what is the condition? The sewer is running half full. Okay, sewer is running half full. So, if the sewer is running half full means, so therefore D will be equal to, the small depth will be the half of the complete depth of the circular sewer. Okay, this is in the case of the circular sewer. Observe it here carefully. Now, there are different set of the formulas which are being given, out of which we always go for choosing the Manning's equations. Okay, so now we have the conditions that sewer is running half full. So, therefore, if D is equal to 0 0.5 times of the D, with respect to this ratio, we can say that D by D is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, now what is the first thing that you need to get to know? Determine what is the diameter of the, okay, that you need to determine it. But in order to determine the major step, we need to come across what is the different sorts of the things that we come across, especially either in determining what is the angle, area, as well as finally finding out the diameter. Determine, determine theta, okay, so P as well as the A also. So when you go for determining this, you go for determining the value of the D. What is that? Okay, what is the diameter? So now let us get to know what is the diameter for that. Before that, we know that, we know that from the hydraulic formulas, so whatever the coefficients that we, if we wanted to determine, therefore theta is equal to 2 into cos inverse of 1 minus 2 into d by d ok now what happens here so 2 into cos inverse of 1 minus 2 into what is this it is being given as 0.5 so 2 into cos 0 so what is this cos inverse of 0 is equal to 90 degree so therefore, this will be this equal to 2 into cos inverse of 0, which is equal to 2 into cos 90 degree, which is equal to 100 and which is equal to 180 degrees. So therefore, you have that theta is equal to 180 degrees. Got the picture for this alternatively when the table is not given. Now, what is the next step that you need to determine it? So, I have determined the theta. Next thing it is, I need to determine what is the perimeter. So, perimeter always given as in the which uh, formula, we have that R is equal to A by P. So, if A and P is being determined, so therefore, R will also be easy for us to calculate it. Okay. With this, let us get to know, I wanted to know what is the area. So, therefore, area given by d square by 4 we have the formula what is that so therefore we have it as theta divided by 360 minus sine theta divided by 2 pi theta see uh, 360 minus sine theta by 2 pi so this is the formula which we are going for addressing this okay so, or we also have in uh, another uh, cases, uh, it is pi theta divided by 360 minus sin theta divided by 2. That is the one sort of the cases that we are been dealing with. Now, if you are going to take the substitute the value of what is this, let us get to know. So, therefore, d square by 4 and pi into theta is equal to what it is 180 degrees divided by this is 360 degrees itself only minus sine of 180 degree divided by 2. So what happens here 180 
ones are 180, twos are 360 degree. So therefore, sine 180 because we have that sine 2 pi or sine 180 degree is always equal to zero. Know the ASTC rule. It applies here. So therefore, which is equal to pi into d square by 4 into 2 which is equal to pi d square divided by 8. Now I know what is the A. Now next thing is what I need to determine what is the perimeter. Perimeter is equal to what that is pi into d into theta divided by 360 degree. That is the formula we are going to utilize. So therefore you determine the perimeter. So pi into d into theta divided by 360 degree. Okay. So now call this as equation number 1. So what is the theta by 360? Let us get to know. Pi into d as it is itself only into theta is equal to how much? It is 180 divided by 360 that is equal to pi into d divided by 2. Call this as equation number 2. Okay. Now next thing is what I need to find out if I wanted to utilize the Mannings equation v is equal to 1 by n r to the power of 2 by 3 yes to the power of 1 by 2 therefore d is to be found out how much it is. So if I wanted to find out what is the value of that so therefore I can find out what is the value of the small d also let us get to calculate it. So therefore we have the formula that is we know that what r is equal to small r is equal to a divided because we need to have certain simplifications here. So a by p is equal to what a is equal to pi d square by 8 square by 8 divided by pi into d divided by 2. Go for the cross multiplication. So therefore pi and pi gets cancelled or it is also equal to pi d square by 8 into 2 divided by pi d. So now therefore it will be 4 pi and pi gets cancelled d 1 times it will be going to get cancelled so therefore r is equal to d by 4. Okay, Getting the point clear for this r is equal to d by 4. Now again from Manning's equation from Manning's equation we have what the formula the Q the discharge if you need to find out okay Q is equal to A into V so therefore small Q is equal to by applying those things in terms of an Manning's equation because V I need to find it out so therefore Q is equal to what 1 by N R to the power of 2 by 3 as well as S to the power of 3 by sorry S to the power of 1 by 2. So therefore with respect to this I will be going to continue in this part. So still we need to utilize the slope as well as the value of the n also and q we have not utilized it this we shall utilize it. Now moving on for this I think that point has been clear so therefore we know that q is equal to a into v. So therefore q is equal to a into v is equal to what 1 by n into r to the power of 2 by 3 into s to the power of 1 by 2. So now what that does it imply so what is the q which is being given okay you take it as small q take it as small q. Now whatever the discharge is being given so therefore 0 0.6 you substitute it what is the area you wanted to find out area is equal to pi d square by 8 okay. So therefore pi into d square by 8. So from 1 and 2 itself only this is from 1 and 2. Next here what is that area is equal to already we know that area is equal to pi d square divided by 8 into 1 by 0 0.015 into what is the r is equal to r is equal to a by p. So therefore d by 4 whole rise to the power of 2 by 3 into s is equal to given what is that is being given so therefore 0 0.0001 whole rise to the power of 1 by 2 whole rise to the power of 1 by 2. So when you have taken this set of the equations so therefore by utilizing the Manning's formula 
you can able to get to know what is the value of the d. So therefore pi d square by 8 and d to the power of 3, let us uh, do one thing, we shall take all the like terms, add all those things, apply the law of the exponentials, let us get to know what does it going to happen. So therefore, we want to determine what is this uh, d by, uh, that is a d value. So therefore, what we have here it is, so all the numericals value that we have here itself only, you shift it or you shall bifurcate it. Pi by 8 into 1 by 0 0.015 into 0 0.001 whole raised to the power of 1 by 2 into d to the power of 2 by 3 and divided by 4 to the power of 2 by 3 that is equal to 0 0.6. Now shift all those terms into the right hand side because the d square has been available here itself only ok d square. So therefore what happens, so therefore whatever the value that you have computed, let me uh, calculate it. So here in this part when you go for the calculation totally let us get to know. So therefore if you add this especially d square plus d to the power of 2 by 3 it is a to the power of m and a to the power of n. So therefore a to the power of m plus n that is giving rise to d to the power of 8 by 3. So d to the power of 8 by 3 is equal to 0 0.6 into 8 into 0 0.015 into 4 to the power of 2 by 3 divided by pi into 0 0.0001 whole raised to the power of 1 by 2 into what is that? Whatever the value if it has been remaining, so pi into d. So this d is been taken, only this thing is, okay, this is the term. So this is the formula which is using for this, okay. Now, therefore, you will be going to have the value, so therefore, d is equal to, which implies that d is equal to, substitute this complete set of an equation, so therefore, d is equal to all this equation whole rise to the power of, 3 by 8 you will be going to have it. So what is that? Let us get to know, compute it. 2, 1, 5.721 one whole raised to the power of 3 by 8. So, five, so roughly you have the answer as 1.923. So that particular sort of the formula in some of the textbook they will be going to round it off it to 1.93 also. Okay. So therefore, while uh, utilizing all those things, you have find out that is the value of d is equal to, I will be going to change that the color so that whatever the answer you will be going to get it, you can uh, able to easily mark it out. So therefore, d is equal to 1.923 meters. If d is equal to 1.923 meters, what we have come across, okay, the next part is so d I wanted to find out, the small d. So therefore d is equal to 0.5 into 1.923, okay, 1.923 into 0.15. I will be going to calculate this, so they have 9617, 0.9617 is the diameter that you are going to get it. This is the alternative method the where we come across in determining the parameters which is having of the greater importance. So this is how you need to go for solving the problems. Okay. I hope so you have understood where and why we have to use this sort of concepts in order to determine it. So please do remember the hydraulic formulas so that it is easy for the calculation. Remember this. Okay. So if at all, if you don't have any sorts of the doubt, let me move on for the next part, which is mainly given, okay. Now, next thing it is, design an outfall circular sewer, design an outfall circular sewer, the next second problem we have, the second problem, design an outfall circular sewer of separate system for a town of population 1 lakh, for a town of population 1 lakh we have persons 
with a water supply at 180 liters per head per day, the sewer can be laid at a slope of 10 in 10,000. So 10 in 10,000 with n is equal to 0 0.012, a self-cleansing velocity of 0.75 meter per second is to be developed. The dry weather flow may be taken as one third of the maximum discharge. So there are set of the following tables which are being given. So from that table, let us get to know what are the things to be calculated out. Okay, so without wasting the much time, let us get to know what is the value that we need to take apart. So the value which is being given as an outfall circular sewer outfall circular sewer type it is outfall circular sewer next in this outfall circular sewer what is the data which is separate system okay with a population of 1 lakh persons so population is equal to 1 lakh population is 1 lakh Next, the water supply is 180 liters. So, therefore, rate of water supply, rate of water supply is equal to 100 liters per day or liters per capita per day, okay, per head per day, it is LPCD. The sewer can be laid in the slope of, slope is being given as 10 in 10,000. So, 10 in 10,000 is equal to is nothing but is equal to 1 by 1000 or we call it as 1 in 1000. Next, what we have the next sort of the thing that we need to take across is related to the n value. n is given as 0 0.012, 0 0.012. The next set that is being given as Self-cleansing velocity has to be developed. Therefore, we call it as a self-cleansing velocity. It is a minimum velocity. Velocity to be developed is equal to 0.75 meter per second. Okay. This is the one thing. Now, then they have been asking it is, the dry weather flow may be taken as one third of the maximum discharge. So the dry weather flow is equal to one third of Q max, what we call it as a maximum discharge. Okay, this is the condition they have been given for us. Now, I need to find out what is the rate of the water supply. So, what is the amount of the water which is being converted in terms of in the conditions, okay, with respect to that, we shall go for calculating this. So, obviously, it is being given as outfall sewer with the water supply. So, whatever the amount of the water with the discharge, what is the discharge, let us get to know, okay which is mainly related to the average water demand okay average rate of water supplied so therefore step one average rate of water supply average rate of water supply we know that q is equal to the population into per capita demand population into per capita demand so what it is population is equal to 1 lakh and per capita is equal to how much it is 180 lpcd so that is into 180 okay this divided by the liters per day has to be converted in terms of a meter cube per second because SIVA has to be designed in terms of a meter cube per second, not in terms of a days. So therefore, for this, you need to have 
conversion factors 10,000 and the days to be converted for 24 into 60 minutes into 60 seconds. So therefore, you have the Q value for this. What is the Q? 0208 meter cube per second. Meter cube per second. Q is equal to 0 0.208 meter cube per second. Now, this has been given. What is the major uh, thing? Simum discharge is being taken. Always, when we go for checking out what is the maximum discharge, so maximum discharge is equal to, so therefore dry weather flow is equal to one third of the maximum discharge. So therefore, I want to know what is the maximum discharge. So under this condition, so therefore Q is equal to 3 into what is the, whatever the flow which you are going to come across, sorry this is in terms of in Q dry weather, dry weather flow, dry weather flow, okay, in terms of in meter cube per second. So, this is Q WDF. So, therefore, if I wanted to make it as Q max is equal to, so therefore, I wanted to take it as, so 3 into Q times of this dry weather flow. So, therefore, what happens? Q, or what we call it as dry weather flow. So, therefore, that is equal to 3 times of the, because anyhow, we have not considered the peak factor. That has to be considered. Okay. So, therefore, 3 into 0 0.208 meter cube per second. So, 3 into 0 0.208 meter cube per second. Let us get to know what is the value that you are going to have it as. So, it is 0 0.624, 0 0.624 meter cube per second. So, this is equal to Q max. Now, what is the formula that we need to utilize? One plus. Next thing is, we need to determine what is the slope. Have we determined what is the diameter? No, we need to determine what is the diameter also. So, what is the step that we need to come across? So, always we need to consider it as any data or let us get to know, multiply all those things. So, therefore, 0 0.624 into 8 into 0 0.012 into 4 to the power of 2 by 3. Okay, 4 to the power of 2 by 3 here pi into 1 divided by 1000 or what we call it as 0 0.001 all rise to the power of 1 by 2. D is equal to how much? What happens here? So, it will be whole things will be getting transformed in terms of an so D is to the power of 8 by 3 is equal to this much. So, therefore, D to the power of 3 by 8. So, sorry, D to the power of 8 by 3, this becomes the whole term to the power of 3 by 8. So, this is the value that we are going to obtain. Finally, after substitution, you will be going to get the value of the D. What is the value of the D? If you say, okay, because 3 by 8 is equal to 0.375, you can also make a note of it. So, 0.915 meters. This is the value of the D. Now, what they have asked is, so the sewer is to be laid a slope of 10 in 10,000 with N is equal to 0 0.02. The next part is a self cleansing velocity of 0.75. Okay. Self cleansing velocity of 0.75 and the dry weather flow may be taken as one third of the discharge. They are taking another set of an question. So that you need to get the answer. What is that? Let us get to know. Q divided by capital Q is equal to how much? So always we which we have considered here Q by Q is equal to 1 by 3, whatever the dry weather flow is to be taken as one third of the Q max. This thing you have it as 0.33, maybe go back to the table and check it, okay. So 0.33, what is the range it will be going to 0 0.31, 0 0.35, 0 0.37. So in between 0 0.31 and 0 0.35 we have it, okay. So therefore, uh, the next set of the thing is the discharge ratio that we have to take, the proportionate depth and proportionate discharge we need to take it. Okay, so therefore, a proportionate discharge is given as how much it is? It's 0 0.3370. So, with respect to that, what is the proportionate depth? Okay, so when the proportionate depth is to be given, let us get to know what is the thing. 
so from the table from the table proportionate discharge this for this corresponding the proportional net depth is equal to that is d by d is equal to 0.4 d by d is equal to 0.4 so when d by d is equal to 0 0.40 next thing they have been asking is related to what is the maximum value that you have to obtain especially to check whether the dry weather flow has caused the self cleansing velocity so if it has to be having the self cleansing velocity we need to take up even the proportionate discharge also so proportionate discharge that we need to given and what is the velocity ratio so proportionate depth for a 0 0.033 we have proportionate depth is 0 0.0 and what is the proportionate velocity if you look upon for this we have v by v is equal to proportionate velocity is equal to proportionate velocity that is v by v is equal to how much it is given 0.902 0.9022 so proportionate velocity we have when you have this we know that what is the thing to be determined so therefore velocity of the flow to be developed okay and the value being given in terms of an uh, v that we need to determine it so therefore what is the capital V you need to determine it we know that from the continuity equation from the continuity equation we have V is equal to Q by A because we, earlier we have Q is equal to A into V if I wanted to find out the velocity so therefore V is equal to Q by A when V is equal to Q by A what is the discharge that is being given the discharge as well as the area to be considered here area what about the diameter that you have it okay so therefore what is the discharge that you have earlier it is 0.624 or uh, in terms of that we are going to have it so therefore that is equal to 0.624 divided by pi into what is the value of the d that you have obtained is 0.915 by 4 pi d square by 4 or okay or we call it as pi by 4 into d square so therefore being obtained is related to 0.95 meter per second you will be going to get it 0.95 meter per second so what was the velocity minimum velocity is equal to minimum velocity is equal to it has to be a greater than that is 0.75 meter per second this is the minimum velocity at least part so therefore 0 0.95 hence satisfactory hence satisfactory hence satisfactory i wanted to find out what is the if the v by v value is this much they have told to find out what is the outfall sever and to determine the velocity of the dry weather flow therefore the velocity of the dry weather flow when you have taken the proportionate ratio that is i know this value i know this i need to compute what is the value of this that is a small velocity of the flow in a sewer running half full conditions so from that whatever the data that we have obtained it it is near to that merely so let us get to know how much it is okay so it has to be greater than this only always so therefore v by v we have it as capital v is equal to 0 0.9 sorry 0 0.9022 so which implies that v is equal to 0 0.0922 into what we have 0 0.95 meter per second let us get to calculate for this okay so therefore what the value that you have uh, come across so 
So this particular value, so 0 0.0, 0 0.9022 into 0 0.95. So the value is 0.857 you are going to get. It. So 0.857 meter per second. So therefore again which is being greater than 0.7 meter per second that is the minimum required. Sorry, this is the minimum required point zero nine. Sorry, point nine zero two two. Point nine zero two two into point nine five meter per second. Point eight five seven meter per second. This is the velocity required in order to check that the proportionate velocity of the flow. So therefore, hence whatever the diameter, if you have taken down, it is a verifying factor so that the assumption has been valid okay sewer is running half full conditions otherwise if you are going to get the values like 0 0.65 0 0.74 or something else therefore it is less than the cell it is not occurring in nature when it is not occurring in nature you get to know what are the things to be studied out here okay so slope has to be given in a proper condition that is the another consideration so if at all in this case if the velocity of the flow is worked out to be less than that therefore slope has to be raised okay that is a given so i hope so you people have understood how we have to determine this okay finding out the table proportionate q and 0 0.40 as well as proportionate velocity is equal to 0.9022 Therefore, next thing it is we have substituted it. So, Q max and this velocity that we have obtained is 0 0.95 meter per second. So, V by V we have this value. I want to find out what is the velocity of the flow during the half running conditions process also whether it has been the same. So, therefore, we have obtained it. So, 0 0.857. Okay. So, this to this velocity will be going to give you the ratio of 0 0.9022. So, this is the part of the question that they go for asking and I hope so you people have understood the concept what we have to determine it. So, with this instance I will be going to stop the class at this part of the stage and kindly remember the, all those hydraulic equations or the formulas still then stay tuned for it we shall come up with the other set of the new problems and the concept in the next part of the class. Thank you one and all.